I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV, episode number 101. It's the first episode of the new year. We've been off for a couple weeks, and we've had people asking, where are you? And so we've, we've been here. We just haven't been doing any videos because we've been busy with the holidays. So we hope everyone had a great Christmas and a, a good new year so far. And we're going to talk about some of the cool stuff coming up in the new year. Uh, but for those of you that are just joining us who haven't been watching our videos before, we are from the comic book store Alter Ego Comics, which is in Lima, Ohio. And every week we read a bunch of comics and we come back and we give you our recommendations. Uh, we realize there are so many comics that come out every week, uh, it's very easy to miss some, some cool stuff. So we do the hard part for you and we tell you what is cool. <laughs> that, that's our job. But as I said, uh, let's take a look forward into, into the future. Expect the sound effect. <laughs> uh, and uh, talk about some of the things that are coming out later this year. Uh, the first up is Age of Ultron. This is by Brian Michael Bendis, Brian Hitch, uh, Carlos Pacheco, and Brandon Peterson. And this has been Bendis' baby for a while. He's been kind of laying the groundwork over the last few years in his Avengers books, and there have been nods to uh, a war with Ultron in the future. So it's going to be Marvel's big summer event, and I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what happens. I hope it doesn't erase Marvel now, because I really like it. So don't do that, please. Uh, what do we have from DC? DC, we've got Trinity War by Jeff Johns and somebody. Uh, they've been laying the seeds for Trinity War through, what, the last two free comic book day issues. Uh, you see some setup for it in Flashpoint. And they've been pimping it also uh, in the backgrounds of other books with Pandora and the Phantom Stranger. Something involving the big three, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. We assume it could be a different Trinity. Typically in DC, when you say Trinity, that's who you mean. But, well, uh, it could be those three characters of the Phantom Stranger, Pandora, and that other that guy. That other guy. That who's, is, let's be honest, it's probably the Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> let's be straight. Uh, you're talking about the three that were uh, being judged by the Council of right, whatever right. they were in uh, Phantom Stranger Zero. Correct. Yeah. Could be those three, uh, but it's coming out uh, sometime. sometime. We this don't year. have a definite. Best guess is summer. We know uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, the only solid date we have is Age of Ultron because the first issue has been solicited already. But everything else we don't have solicitations for. It's just sometime in 2013. Uh, also from DC, and this one I am extremely excited about is a new Superman book by Scott Snyder and Jim Lee. And with these two involved, it's going to be huge. Uh, there's no title for it yet. Everyone's been assuming it's going to be called Man of Steel to kind of tie in or, or play off of the movie when it comes out. But, you know, Snyder has an excellent track record over at DC and even before that. Um, but Superman is a tough one. Superman mm. is a tough character to write. Everyone has said that. And it's been he hasn't really found his footing, uh, the character of Superman anyway, in the New 52. But you throw Jim Lee on there, who is one of the reasons that Justice League has been selling as well as it has been. And my prediction is this will be the biggest book of the year. That Superman, the new Superman book by Snyder and Lee is going to be the biggest book of the year. Uh, also from Scott Snyder, we've got a new series called Wake with uh, art by Sean Murphy, who you may remember he worked with on American Vampire Survival of the Fittest. And uh, this is the, the book, this is allegedly the reason uh, that American Vampire has been slowed back and kind of put on hold, so Snyder can work on this, as well, as well as some other projects, presumably Superman. Superman. <laughs> Batman. But uh, yeah, it's sort of an underwater horror series, and uh, it looks really cool. All the preview stuff, which is limited to like two, issue, two images and some yeah. uh, paragraphs, sounds really cool, and I have a lot of confidence in Snyder's ability to make kind of a psychological horror... Battle with the Sea. I don't even know what it is, but it sounds awesome. And it's from Vertigo. And speaking of Vertigo, I'll let you do this one, too, because you love him. So Speaking of Vertigo, goodbye, Karen Berger. <laughs> we hardly knew you. Berger. Berger? Okay. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll pronounce it half. Bergeron. Yes. It's Harrison Bergeron. <laughs> yes. Uh, the big news out of Vertigo, which is not news because it was announced last summer at San Diego, but it will be happening this year, is Before Sandman. That's not actually, I don't know if that's an official title, but that's what they're so. referring to it as. Uh, the new book by Neil Gaiman uh, with art by J.H. Williams, who's just been knocking out of the park on Batwoman. Uh, one of the most visually interesting books in the New 52. Probably the most. There's not a lot of competition in that spot. But uh, yeah, taking place prior to the start, well, sort of at the very beginning. Uh, the, the traditional Sandman story starts with death, with, I'm sorry, with uh, Dream being captured in the place of death by some uh, people. <laughs> Occultist, Aleister Crowley and occultists and whatnot. But the reason he was able to be captured by humans is because he had just fought this epic battle. Things had been crazy and he was weakened and disoriented. Now we're getting the story of why he was weakened and disoriented. Something that was great enough to bring one of the elemental powers of the universe to his knees and to be captured by lowly humans. And 
it's Neil Gaiman. It's going to be awesome. I haven't had Sandman, new Sandman in a very long time, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, let's talk about Image Comics in 2013 for a <laughs> minute or two. They have a slew of creator-owned projects uh, that were announced at San Diego Comic-Con last year, and uh, this is just a few. Well, it's more than a few. Double that. What's, what's a few times two? Six <laughs> or so of the series that we're looking forward to. We've got Oliver by Gary Whittle and Derek Robertson, which is a steampunk version of Oliver Twist. And Derek Robertson was on the panel in San Diego and seems totally excited about this. Uh, says they've been working on it for a very long time. So looking forward to that one. I noticed that doesn't have the exclamation point. So that's how we delineate it between it and the musical version. Yes. Which is just Oliver. It's not Oliver exclamation point. <laughs> it's just Oliver. Uh, there's also a steampunk version of Annie coming out. No, not, awesome. that will not be happening. It's a hard knock life. Pretty Deadly by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Emma Rios about a Western. It's a Western about a disfigured female bounty hunter. That's really all I know. Lady Jonah Hex. Knowing that it's Kelly Sue DeConnick and Emma Rios is enough for me because I am loving what DeConnick is doing on Avengers Assemble. In fact, I can't wait for the next issue, which comes out next week. Uh, Snapshot is by Andy Diggle and Jock, the team behind The Losers. And uh, this is about a comic fan who grabs a hitman's phone and uh, what happens after that. So um, I don't know if it's hilarity that ensues or body count or craziness, but it sounds like an interesting premise. We've got Three by Kieran Gillen and Ryan Kelly, and this takes the, uh, the story of 300 and looks at it from the other side of the three slaves who ran away <laughs> instead of uh, went to fight. So that looks interesting. Satellite Sam is by Matt Fraction and Howard Chaikin, and this is about a children's TV host who is found dead and has a box of photos of all the women that he's ever slept with. Uh, that's all I know, and uh, that's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt Fraction and Howard Jacob. Uh, and finally, we've got East of West by Jonathan Hickman and Nick Dragota. This is a sci-fi western about the four horsemen of the apocalypse who are hunting down the president of the United States. Hickman and his sci-fi. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm in. I'm there. Uh, and actually, that's the first one to be out in 2013, that one will be out in March. Okay, well, that's just the beginning from Image. There are some other ones we didn't talk about, including a new series by Greg Rucka and James Robinson and a bunch of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But let's get on to this week's comics, because that's why you're here, right? Okay. <laughs> Wait, you're not talking back, camera. Why, why not? My pick of the week this week, and this was a, a tough one because there were some really strong contenders, was Star Wars number 1 by Brian Wood and Carlos Danda. Um... I gotta be honest, I'm not a huge Brian Wood fan. I've read some of his stuff that I've really liked, and some of his stuff is just really abstract and just doesn't work for me. Uh, so I was a little nervous about him being involved with the Star Wars universe, but I all of my fears were set aside as I opened the first page, and it was just great stuff. Um, I think he's captured the, the tone of this series, which takes place about, if I'm not mistaken, about two weeks after uh, the original Death Star is destroyed in Episode Four: A New Hope. So all the stuff that happens in Empire and Return of the Jedi, uh, Luke doesn't know that Leia's his sister, that Vader's his father. Uh, all the stuff that we know, they don't know, which is kind of cool uh, because we may see some interesting things happen. So I think Wood has captured the feel of the Star Wars universe very well, which is tricky to do, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars comics. I love the movies, but it's been very difficult for me to get into the comic books that are dealing with the original trilogy. Uh, the stuff dealing with characters I never heard of before and, uh, you know, exploring the story of Hammerhead. I have no interest in, in that stuff. <laughs> His name is Mobilon Nato. I know. You, as you remind me so often. I want to hear about, you know, these stories that, that happen with Luke, Leia, and Han. With the trinity of the Star <laughs> Wars universe. That's what Trinity War's about. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the, one of the big stories, though, with, with this book, or the big story with this, is the artwork. Uh, Carlos Danda's artwork is great. Um, it's tough to... When you're dealing with licensed characters and dealing with people, with, with characters that everyone knows what they look like, I think there's a certain degree of difficulty there. Uh, and he, he, I think he pulls it off, and it, it actually has a little bit of a J. Scott Campbell look to it, I think. Uh, at least Leia kind of <laughs> looks like a J. Scott Campbell drawing. Uh, but I, I was really impressed with that. I know that Josh had some nitpicks with uh, with his ship designs. 
But <laughs> honestly, I wasn't looking at the little typho- the little X-wing that was off in the corner. I was I was looking at more of the character designs. So, uh, you know, great all-around package, Star Wars number one. If you are a fan of, of the original trilogy, if you're a Star Wars fan and you've never read Star Wars comics, this is a great place to jump in. If you've been reading Star Wars comics, you're, you're going to pick this up, so I'm, I shouldn't even say anything else. Uh, but it also has covers by Alex Ross, so there. There you go. Uh, and my pick of the week uh, is an indie book, end of Ta- The End Times of Bram and Ben, number one. Uh, written by James As- Asmus, who uh, wrote the most recent arc of Thief of Thieves and the most the current Gambit series, uh, with art by Jim Festane and Remy Brew. No. Re- Rem Brew? Festane is co-writer on the book. Oh, I'm sorry. And Rem Brew is the artist. Rem Brew? Do better. Uh, <laughs> this is actually a very cool book. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff the last decade or so about the apocalypse, about the end of the world, about the rapture. And it's sometimes a little tough to cut the wheat from the chaff. You know, there's some that have great ideas and some that are kind of awful. And this one, surprisingly and happily, is in the good side. Uh, It's very tongue-in-cheek, very fun. Uh, Basically, you've got uh, a guy of questionable moral turpitude. Uh, The rapture happens, and he gets called up to heaven by a clerical error, uh, which is quickly remedied, relatively speaking. They send him back to Earth, but now he's the only person that knows it was actually a rapture. Everyone else is like, oh, well, maybe aliens or something. We don't know. He's the one person who knows what's going down. And uh, he does not take the path you would might expect in that circumstance. Uh, very humorous, very self-aware, very almost kind of like Kevin Smith. You know, they walk a mm-hmm. line between playing blue and not. A lot of cool little humor books. Um, I was, it was great. I really enjoyed it. If you like uh, the humor and the artwork of Chu, then you mm-hmm. definitely want to pick this up because uh, Rem Brew uh, has a style that's very similar to Rob Gilroy's on Chu. And the humor, I think, is, is kind of along the same lines of Chu. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are a devout Christian, you may not want to pick this one up. <laughs> uh, if you can't handle a little humor, um, if you didn't like dogma, <laughs> then you probably don't want to pick this up. But this is one of the, one of the uh, rare, not rare instances, but uh, both Josh and I gave this a big thumbs up. So we're in agreement that it's really cool. Uh, also this week, I truly enjoyed Punisher Warzone number three by Greg Rucca and Carmine Italian guy. Carmine Di Gian Domenico. Sorry, Carmine. Uh, and I'll tell you why I like this. We've been we've talked about the previous issues. I believe we've talked about both of the previous issues. This is a I believe a five issue miniseries that ends Greg Rucka's run on Punisher, which has been outstanding. And this is the Avengers finally being co- being coerced by Spider Man to do something, to step in and take down Frank Castle before something really truly horrible happens. Um because something really, truly horrible did happen. And they think the Punisher did it, but he really didn't. So each issue has been one of the Avengers going... I don't know why they just don't all go at the same time. <laughs> but one of the Avengers going off to, to uh, capture slash talk to uh, the Punisher. And this issue, it's Thor. And the the reason I really like this is I think Rucka... Rucka's giving us something that we really don't see. I mean, I can't think of a comic where Thor and the Punisher have interacted together. Right. And... Uh, you know, Thor ends up having to knock out the Punisher, uh, not not with Mjolnir, on, which on the cover it looks like happens, <laughs> and that would just break his face into a billion pieces. Uh, but he has to knock him out, and when he comes to, Thor is sitting there with a six pack and tosses him a beer, and he's like, "We need to talk," um, which was very cool. Which sounds like a Wolverine move, and he didn't say we need to talk; he said something verily. He used his Thor speak. Uh, and so the the interaction between. Frank Castle and Thor is just really cool. And it was the same way with uh, the Black Widow and Punisher in the previous issue. And it was Wolverine in the first issue. So I don't know who's coming up next. Could be Cap. I think they're going to end it with probably Cap and Steve. Uh, but it's really good. And I encourage you, if you haven't, if you're a Punisher fan, go check out Rucka's run. Uh, the whole run on his regular Punisher series is collected in graphic novel format. And uh, this will be collected as well. So Greg Rucka, we're going to miss you on Punisher. Uh, also up this week, we've got Legends of the Dark Knight number four. I really like Legends of the Dark Knight. It's, what, what the Legends of the Dark Knight excels at is what the Twilight Zone excelled at. Self-contained stories. You don't have to have an overarching arc. Everybody knows who Batman is. They know the key players. So each issue is just a grouping, or in some cases, I think the last issue was all one story. 
It's just a story, a different creative team. It's kind of, it has the same strength as what Brave and the Bold used to have. You know, you just get these A-list people or B-list people, whoever they get to write it, they get a team and they don't have to come up with a pitch for a six issue story arc. It just has to be one moment of Batman that's awesome. So you get a lot of really cool kind of iconic moments. Uh, this time around we get a story that centers on Two-Face, we get a story that centers on the Joker and a third story that's basically just a solo Batman. And they're all really good. Uh, one of them especially, the the, Twi the Two-Face one, had an ending very reminiscent of The Twilight Zone, and I just loved the heck out of it. If you're a Batman fan, you need to read these because they're, they remind you what you love about the character. And finally, we've got the most controversial book this week, Superior <laughs> Spider-Man number one by Dan Slott and Ryan Stegman. Now, I really can't talk about this without talking about Amazing Spider-Man 698, 99, and 700, so it's been a while since those have been out, so I'm going to talk about what happened in those books. If you have not read them, if by some freak of nature you have not uh, been exposed to what's in those, those comics, turn down the volume now. Uh, but in 698... And just watch our lips move? <laughs> yes, and don't read our lips. <laughs> 698 uh it, it was a an amazing issue it was it was really uh a, an m night Shyamalan issue where there's a twist at the end and it turns out that dr octopus has uh switched bodies with peter parker and doc ock has been riddled with cancer and various other diseases over the last hundred issues of spider-man since issue number 600 so peter's trapped in this dying decrepit body uh his mind is anyway and otto has peter's spider-man body so that was the reveal at the end of 698. 699 shows us how it happened with one of Doc's Octobots uh, in one of the encounters that, uh, that Peter had with Dr. Octopus over the last several issues. And then 700 is apparently the end of Peter Parker. Uh, Doc Ock's body finally gives out, and Peter's trapped in his body, and we assume that Peter has gone to the great beyond. We actually have a nice, uh, a nice area where he... He follows the light and goes and talks to Uncle Ben and Gwen, and, and his parents are there. So it was a very emotional issue. Now, we've heard a lot of things from customers and from people on the interwebs about how much they hated the issue, uh, that you know it's just not right, they love Peter Parker. Superior Spider-Man number one is the beginning of a new series with Doc Ock as Spider-Man, also written by Dan Slott, who did the previous run on Spider-Man. I have to say, give Slott a chance. <laughs> I have been a fan of his Spider-Man run since it started, and he is a big fan of the character. He's, a, he's an excellent writer. Have faith in him. And I think if you pick up Superior Spider-Man number one, and if you make it to the end of the book, do not flip to the end of the book, but if you make it to the end of the book, you will have some of your faith restored. Um, another cool thing that you want to do with this is Marvel's AR app. Um, I don't know how many of you are using your smartphones to access the material, but on the last page of Superior Spider-Man number one, you can access a, uh, a video a letters page with Dan Slott and Steve Wacker and L.A. Pyle, who are two of the editors uh, on the book, which was really cool to watch. And it was actually they answered four or five letters, which was nice. But I got to say, uh, I, I understand the emotion tied up with Peter Parker and with Spider-Man. Spider-Man is the Marvel character that got me into comics. But... It's important for Marvel's writers to keep telling new and fresh stories, and this is one way to do it. The story here is what happens next, and I, I myself, I, Josh said this, I said this, Alex said this, after we finish 700, I don't know if I want to read a Spider-Man book where Doc Ock is Spider-Man. And um, after reading the first issue, I do want to read the next issue. I want to see what happens next, and that's the sign of a good story, sign of a good storyteller. So this is a little long-winded, but... I would say, if you're a Spider-Man fan, you owe it to yourself to give Superior Spider-Man number one a shot, and maybe even stick with it through the first arc to see what happens. And you'll see, as I said, by the end of issue number one, you'll have some of your faith restored. The end. <laughs> and cut. And that's it for this week. Uh, we will be back next week with another batch of recommendations from the staff at Alter Ego Comics. If you do have any questions you'd like us to answer, please leave, leave those in the uh, comments area below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.